Okay, uh, let us consider our typical exam question that we have for our algebraic expressions. There are some typical questions that we are going to try and answer together. So make sure that you go through other revisions, exercises, so that you do understand these basics. All right, then we are given on question 4.3, simplify the expression. So the first part, 4.31. This is our expression. So remember that we have got the part of like terms where we must consider the like terms, the terms that are of X, they must be of X and also be raised of the same power. If they are like that, they are to be like terms. If they are of A, they must be of A and the same power. So same variable, same power. So there, if you are to consider, we're going to see that the 4x squared, this one, the minus 3x squared are like terms. Then the minus 7x here, on the other hand, with these 8x are like terms. Then the 1, which is a constant, and the minus 2 are also like terms. So we are going to consider like that. So that is 4x squared minus 3x squared. So that's 4 minus 3, which is 1. So it was supposed to be like this, 1x squared. But we know that 1x squared is same as what? x squared. Okay? Then we move on to the part of x. Minus 7x and 8x. So you add the coefficients, the minus 7 and the 8. Minus 7 plus 8 is going to give us a 1. So it was supposed to be 1x. But 1x, it is going to be what? Just x, all right? So there we have got uh, a 1, but you write it as 1x, which is same as x. Then you move on to the constants, a 1 and a minus 2. So that's 1 minus 2. That is going to be minus 1. So this one, you just write it as it is minus 1. This is not minus 1x. This is not minus 1x squared. It is just minus 1. This is a a constant, we do not have X on that part. All right, 4.32 to simplify, but there we have got a bracket to consider, a bracket. So you're supposed to distribute this minus 5X into the bracket. Okay, distribute this into the bracket. So meaning to say we are going to multiply the minus 5X multiply to the 2X. So as you consider, you multiply the numbers minus 5, and 2, which is minus 10. So if you multiply x and x, the multiplication, you add the exponents. Remember, the bases are the same. So you're going to add the exponents. There is a 1 and a 1. So minus so you're going to add 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that will be minus 10x squared. You distribute that. You do the same thing with the minus 5x to the 3. You distribute inside, but these are just going to multiply like this, minus and a minus, which is a plus. 5 times 3, which is 15, and it's just going to be 15x. All right? So that is what we're going to have for, for 2 max. You distribute that. All right. The square root of 169a squared plus the cube root of 64a to the exponent of 3. So remember the square root, you're looking for a number that multiplies itself to give you these 169. So remember 13 squared is 169. So the square root of 13 squared, I mean of 169 is 13. So that is 13. What about the square root of A squared? In order for, if you're given the square root of A squared like this, remember inside of the square root, there's a two. So to remove these two, you just divide by it here. So that is a to the exponent of 2 over the number inside of the root sign, which is a 2. So 2 and 2 is going to cancel. That will be a 1. So that is 13a plus the cube root of 64. So you do the same thing. The number that multiplies itself three times to give us a 64. Remember, that's 4. 4 to the exponent of 3 is 64. 4 times 4 times. So that is a 4. Then the cube root of a to the x, the term, that is a times a times a. So that means, again, 
we talk of the A, or simply divide, like I was explaining, to remove this number inside of the root sign. You divide it to the exponent. So it's A to the exponent of 3 divided to this number inside of the root, which is the 3. So you divide by 3. So that is going to be A to the exponent of 1, which is same as A. So by determining the square root and the cube root of this, we have now like terms to be considered. There we have got A. There we have got A. So you can add these numbers that you're given 13 plus 4. What is 18 plus 4? That is 17. So that is going to be uh, 17a at the end, just like that. So you can add like terms, remember. You can add the like terms. So you have to consider this a and a. I add the coefficients, 13 and 4, which is going to be a 7. All right, let's consider 4.3. 4. There we are given a trinomial that is 1, 2, 3 terms divided to a monomial. So what are we going to do? We separate each of these terms, a plus b plus c over whatever that you're given, if it's n, that is same as a over n plus b over n plus c over n. If there was a d here, it's going to be b over n like that. So it simply means terms can be separated by a single term in the denominator. That is 10x to the exponent of 3 over 2x, you separate to minus 4x squared, so that is going to be minus 4x squared over 2x, you separate to the 8x, so that is the same as 8x over 2x. All right, so let's see what you're going to have here. 2 into 10, or 10 divided by 2, that is a 5. So this is going to give us a 5. But there is x to the exponent of 3, divided to this x to the exponent of 1. So we are back to the laws of exponents, dividing the bases, which are the same. You subtract the exponents. Remember from our term 3 when we talked about the laws of exponents. 3 minus 1, which is a 2. So that is going to be 5x squared. We're done. We move on to the other part. We do the same thing. So we've got minus, we divide 4 divided by 2, or 2 into 4, that is going to be a 2. Then we do the same thing here. We are dividing same bases. We subtract x to the exponent of 2. This is the same as a 1. So we're going to subtract a 1, which is x to the exponent of 1. Remember, x to the exponent of 1 is same as x. Plus, in this case, we divide 2 into 2, that's a 1, into this 8, that's a 4. The x and the x are the same. Remember, just like 2 over 2 cancels, that's a 1. So if you cancel the x and the x, you're going to get a 1 there. 4 times 1, which is a 4, like that. So meaning to say, this can be simplified each and every part divided to the single term that you are given in the denominator. You must separate each and every every term after that you apply your laws of exponents you saw that is this part you must also consider the laws of expo exponents remember when i explained your syllabus i talked about that you must also consider algebra with the laws of exponents so as you revise for term three you are not just revising term three you are also revising your term two work at the same time so do not neglect whatever that you did in term two, because it is just a continuation from what you had before. So these are the typical questions. Let's revise as much as we can.